if you want to try it, please can you make sure you're sitting uh, reasonably comfortably. It's only going to take two minutes and that you're in a fairly relaxed state. Think for a moment about the fact of having a brother or a sister that you don't already have. If you've not got an older brother or a younger sister, then let's imagine that you have one of those. And if you've already got older and younger brothers and sisters, have one that's even older or even younger. Okay, that's it. Decision's made. Don't change it. Don't think about it. That's it. Stick with that. Not important to worry about anything else there. Now, I'd just like you to give them a name. First name that comes into your mind. Doesn't matter. Don't question it. Don't dislike it or like it. That's the name. Done. So you've got this sibling, this brother or sister, and you've got the name. And you might already know what colour their hair is. But don't give any of this any more thought, except that now uh, you're sitting down and you're actually sitting in a cab and it's on its way across town because a few minutes ago you got a telephone call telling you that this person, I'm sorry to have to tell you, has had an accident, a road accident. You're not quite clear what happened, something to do with being possibly hit by a car at any rate. Um, it's an accident and their arm is damaged and they're immediately going in for an operation. So you're shooting across to the hospital. And you're sitting there in the cab. You're seven minutes or so away from the hospital. And your phone goes again. OK, you answer it. You don't have to do any of this. Don't think about it. Don't imagine it. Just accept that it's the case. If I tell you that you're wearing red or you're wearing blue, you don't have to feel different. You just are. It's just the case. You're sitting in the cab. That's it. Don't try to act sitting in the car. You're sitting. That's it. You're there, sitting in the car, and your phone goes again. And it's the hospital again. And it's a woman's voice. And she immediately passes you to another person. And it's also a woman's voice. And she asks if you're on the way to the hospital, and you say yes, if there is there any further information. And they mention something, and you say something about the arm, and uh, there's a little bit of hesitation. And they say, well, I'm afraid um, the, uh, the, the accident was a little bit more serious, and are you going to be at the hospital soon? And you realise that could sound very serious, and you say yes. And somehow or other, in the course of things, they hang up, or you hang up, and you're talking to the driver or something. Four minutes later, you arrive at the hospital and you go in through the front doors and there's a reception desk. There's a room beside the reception desk, which you'll pass into. They seem to already know who you are. And you go into this reception room and you sit down and you wait about two or three minutes. And you're wondering about asking the receptionist what's happening and if you can go through and see your brother or sister. But at that point, a male doctor comes along and asks who you are and what you've been told about the accident. And I'm sorry to have to say that you're given the news that your brother or sister has died. <sighs> sorry. I am sorry to have to tell you that you're family members died. Maybe you still feel surprised by this acting exercise. Maybe you're crying. Doesn't really matter which it is. You've got a reaction. And if not, this exercise wasn't the one for you or I didn't do it well enough for you. And if we get the CIA and the FBI to put their lie detectors on your wrists and see if you are actually, actually, actually upset about the death of this family member, they'll see you are. It's not pretense, it's not a lie, it's not an act, it's not fake. It's real. You're actually upset. So there's a real feeling, it's real. The person doesn't exist. And it's a real feeling. You already have developed your own, or started to develop your own ways of actually 
doing what happens in a scene, actually doing it and not faking it. And so when I come up with ways I do it, they may well not work for you, and by all means find your own. I'm just wanting to push this idea to one or two of you who may want to hear this now. And if you don't want to hear it now, to have it in the back of your mind, because we all suffer from the difficulty of doing this thing, of, of being real. I think in one of these other films I gave the example of someone with a line, and the lines, hang on, I'll see if I can hear them coming. And you can easily go, hang on, I'll see if I can hear them coming. No, they're not there. Or you can actually listen. You can actually say, hang on, I'll see if I can hear them coming. No, they're not there. It's legal, you know, you're allowed to actually listen, actually do things. I'm I'm glad to have silly examples because I want this whole film to be just coming at you from different weird angles, like a, a bunch of arrows that may or may not be hitting their target. You can always say anything if you want to, for real. And there's nothing that you can't act. If my line in a cartoon, if I'm doing the voiceover for a cartoon, and my line is, I'm only 11 inches tall. Now, I can just say the line, just say the words. I can say in the cartoon voiceover that I'm 11 inches tall and just say the words with a little bit of sadness or seriousness or amusement or whatever I want to do, it'll work fine. But it'll be better still if I can actually say it, if I can actually be 11 inches tall. Not pretending. Not faking, not trying to convince you, not making it seem as though I really am 11 inches tall, actually being 11 inches tall. Actually. Actually. And if you don't do that, you're not acting. Not really. Not with the big boys, not in the way that you can, not in the way that acting's meant to mean, not in the way that justifies what we give up in our lives for being actors. Other opportunities, riches, friends, children, dogs, cats, Homes, money, confidence, lots of things, lots of us give up for acting. It's got to be for something big. So, how do I say I'm 11 inches tall? Well, my system, and this will seem very silly to you. But it would work for the FBI, I assure you. They would absolutely know I was 11 inches tall, according to a lie detector test. Because there's an island um, beside Baker Island, which is an American island just over 3,500 miles to the west coast of southern United States, uh, near the equator, a little island called Baker's Island, uninhabited, and there's a little island off it. Now... For all you know and for all I know, and I, it doesn't matter if it sounds silly, the point is we're trying to get at acting. For all you know and for all I know, there's a group of people on that island and they speak a language that isn't spoken anywhere else in the world. And even if it is, that's not the point. They speak a language in which there are certain words which sometimes sound like words in another language. So that the words in French, see to play, could sound like see the play. <laughs> And on this island, uh, one of the expressions they have is when translated into English, I'm a tall white man. And in their language, it's I'm 11 inches tall. And why would I want to tell anyone that I'm a tall white man? And this is private stuff. I wouldn't normally share it with anyone, but this is a teaching exercise. So... I suppose privately in my own hope, because it will sound silly when talking about it to anyone else like now, but I'm thinking, well, what am I? I'm a teacher? Yes, maybe. I like to think I am. I've got brilliant things to say. I think it's important to say them. Will people hear them? Will it make a change? Don't know. So am I really effectively a teacher? Am I effectively a good friend to people? I'm effectively brave? Am I a good tennis player? Am I honest? I can't answer unequivocally yes to any of these things. What am I in the end if I admit to being possibly a failure at everything in my life? What am I? I'm a tall 
white man. I'm 11 inches tall. And when you're watching the voiceover and you hear the character say that, and it's not exactly as I'm telling you I can play King Lear of that another film, um, when you're watching the film, frankly, I think you'll get involved with this poor little character just because you know they really are. 11 inches tall. So find your ways, do anything, anything that will make it real. Real. If you've got to love someone, she's dying. She's your grandmother. And it's played by this actress who's late, who's rude, who cuts in on your lines, who has been unkind about you and stopped you getting another job, who wants all the attention. Rather a difficult person to work with, but there are ways of dealing with that. Nonetheless, you've got to love her, love her. And you look across at her and you've got to care about the fact that she's dying. Why should you care? Yeah, you could imagine she's someone else, I suppose. Well, if it works for you, fine. Whatever works for you is fine, anything. It can be mad things like my little island off <laughs> Baker Island. But um, when you talk to someone on a stage, when I talk to this camera now, am I actually talking to you? Obviously not. Obviously not, yes, obviously not. Why? Well, because I'm not talking to you. I don't know who you are. But if I actually talk to you... Not in a sentimental way of me getting worked up and, oh, I want to talk so much and spread my wonderful ideas to you and so I'm really talking to you. Not that. If I'm actually talking to you. So this irritating actress who's opposite me, who's dying. She's actually my grandmother. The details of why I didn't know before and that I suddenly found out, oh my God, what a coincidence, that she actually is my grandmother. We don't need to go into. It's a leap that you can actually talk to the person who's there, actually. Actually. actually yes and uh, i was just going to add uh, not i hope to show off or to make it seem something you've got to copy but just to remind you that the idea of this line that you have to say when you come into the room can matter you're waiting off stage the curtain's gone up the director said action if you're filming there's a few moments while presumably the person who's sitting on a sofa in this room is seen by the audience and then you enter oh i'm surprised to see you would do